Hi, Kensington. My name is Chris Cook. I'm the director of CARE Initiatives. Uh, I've been asked to read from the Gospel of Luke chapters 6 and 7, and also uh, the 22nd Psalm. Uh, we're going to start in, uh, in, in Luke, and uh, we'll start at uh, verse 1. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and his disciples began to pick some heads of grain, rub them in their hands, and eat the kernels. Some of the Pharisees asked, why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? Jesus answered them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and taking the consecrated bread, he ate what was lawful only for the priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. And then Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath, he went into the synagogue and was teaching, and a man was there whose right hand was shriveled. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. But Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he said to the man with the shriveled hand, Get up and stand in front of everyone. So he got up and stood there. And then Jesus said to them, I ask you, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? He looked around at them all and then said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was completely restored. But they were furious and began to discuss with one another how they, what they might do to Jesus. One of those days, Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose twelve of them, who he also designated apostles. Simon, who he named Peter, his brother Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was called the Zealot, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. He went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there, and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by evil spirits were cured, and people all tried to touch him because power was coming out from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for those of you will for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you and when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. Because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their fathers treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for that is how their fathers treated the false prophets. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even the sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even the sinners do that. And if you lend to those whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to, lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. But love your enemies. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful as your Father is merciful. 
Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. He, can also, he also told them this parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A student is not above his teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like his teacher. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes or grapes from briars. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For out of the overflow of his heart, his mouth speaks. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? I will show you what he is like who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood came, the torrent sh struck that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like the man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment that the torrent struck that house, it collapsed, and its destruction was complete. When Jesus had finished saying all of this, in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. There, a centurion's servant, whom his master valued highly, was sick and about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders to the Jew, of the Jews to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly with them. This man deserves to have you do this because he loves our nation and has built our synagogue. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes. I tell that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. And turning to the crowd that following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith, even in Israel. Then the man who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. Soon afterward, Jesus went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went along with him. As he approached the town gate, a dead person was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a large crowd came from the town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Then he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. This news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding country. John's disciples told him about all of these things. Calling two of them, he sent them to Jesus to ask, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? 
When the men came to Jesus, they said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who was to come, or should we expect someone else? At that time, Jesus cured many who had diseases, sicknesses, and evil spirits, and gave sight to many who were blind. So he replied to the messengers, Go back and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk. Those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. After John's messengers left, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John. What did you see when you went out to the desert to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? No, those who wear expensive clothes and indulge in luxury are in palaces. But what did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is, what, this is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. All the people, even the tax collectors, when they heard Jesus' words, acknowledged that God's way was right because they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and experts in the law re rejected God's purpose for themselves because they had not been baptized by John. To what then can I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to each other. We played the flute for you, but you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not cry. For John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking and you say, he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by all her children. Now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Then a woman who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. She brought in an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. And then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who was touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. And Jesus said, answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two men owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he canceled the debts of both. Now, which of whom will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt canceled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, You see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she has loved much. But he who has been forgiven little loves little. Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say amongst themselves, who is this who forgives, even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. 
So that's the end of chapter 7, and um, we're going to move to uh, Psalm 22. Uh, and again, this is um, just a, an amazing uh, piece of poetry that's just so intense, and you'll see uh, the amazing moves from uh, utter utter despair uh, to praising God. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer, by night, and am not silent. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the praise of Israel. In you our fathers put their trust they trusted and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast upon you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me. Strong bulls of Bashan encircle me, roaring lions tearing their prey, opening their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water, and all of my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It is melted away within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Dogs have surrounded me. A band of evil men has encircled me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all of my bones. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But you, O oh Lord, be not far off. O oh, my strength, come quickly to help. Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my brothers in the congregation. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he is not despised or disdained from suffering the afflicted of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you he com comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. They will seek the Lord. They who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord. All of the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. All of the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness to a people yet unborn, for he has done it. And it's, it's such strong words and, and such a, a wide swing from utter despair to um, almost almost ecstasy. And in the moments, and, and I, I meet with people and, 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 and we work with people who are in the absolute lowest point of their life, uh, either through the death of a loved one or their life is completely crushed by, uh, by an addiction or, or bad choices. And, 
and we see it and we're here out of what God has done for us uh, to be an encouragement uh, to people who are hurting. Um, I'm hurting. We're all hurting in this moment. And even in our darkest moment, I am remember, I, I am reminded in this in this psalm of God's presence, uh, even when we can't see and when nothing we can can sense uh, would point to God's presence at all. He is still there. Uh, I'm reminded in another uh, psalm that God is near to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Um, that is something that, uh, that sustains me uh, through some of the darkest times uh, of life. Uh, but, you know, I still have to go back to the middle of uh, chapter 6 and talk about uh, love for our enemies. And, man, oh man, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, just seeing uh, the times that we're in and, and how seeming enemies have been created out of our friends. Uh, the people that we disagree with politically or culturally or whatever. And, and I love just kind of skipping over this passage uh, when Jesus says, But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. And in the back of my mind, I'm going, I don't want to. I'd really rather not. And, 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 and God presses in even further. He says, bless those who curse you. And I can still, in my hard heart, say that, man, I, I, I don't even want to do that. Um, but I believe that the last thing that he says there is pray for those who mistreat you. And I sit there in, in my hard-heartedness and I say, uh, I don't want to, but God, if you tell me to, I will. And as I pray for, you know, people that I have tough relationships with and or, you know, have insulted me in some way, um, something happens when I pray for them. And that isn't, it doesn't have anything to do with what they've done. It's just the posture of my heart before God. And as I pray and ask God to bless them, Something happens to my heart that that lets God in and maybe gets me to the point where uh, I could actually bless those who curse me. And maybe even more that I could actually have the strength, the inner strength that God has given me uh, to do good to those who hate me. Uh, it's a tall order, I know. Um, but the thing that I found over and over again is I've yielded my will and let God move into that. It doesn't come from my own direct effort. It comes from the inside out. As God changes me uh, and turns me into the person that could actually bless my enemies, um, bless the people who disagree with me, bless the people that I'm in tough relationships with, um, that's something that uh, even now, even when I don't want to, um, I have to yield in that and actually start praying for them and let that process happen. So thanks for being a part uh, of this 40 days. Uh, there are great things happening in our community uh, as we come together and, uh, and, and study scripture and are, are transformed by it. And, and then out of an overflow of that redeemed heart that we can bless other people. Um, it's been exciting and, and, and hope you're getting as much out of it as I am. So thank you so much.